uh, right on time. I certainly appreciate your punctuality. We're going to give it another minute before we kick off to make sure that everybody can hear the entire presentation. So stay with us for just a couple more minutes and we'll get started. For those of you just signing on, we don't have any elevator or hold music, so uh, my voice is all you should be hearing right now in addition to seeing uh, the title screen. Uh, we're going to give it uh, another 45 seconds or so to let the last couple of folks sign in, and then we're going to get started. Oh, just like that, magic. We just had several folks, uh, additional folks join us. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Michael Sparks, and I manage uh, the government uh, solutions programs for Zebra Technologies. Uh, I am very happy to be your host for this webinar on asset tracking and RFID. Uh, our speaker today is Chief Richard Scott of the Benita Springs Fire Control and Rescue District. Chief Scott is responsible for the overall operations of the fire district, including fire suppression, EMS, and fire prevention. He's been with the district for 27 years now and is going to share his experience implementing an RFID-based asset tracking solution. Uh, we're going to have plenty of time at the end of the session for questions. So if you do have a question, uh, please enter it into the chat box on the bottom of your Zoom menu, and then we'll answer those at the end of the webinar. So Chief Scott, thank you very much for being here and volunteering your time. The floor is yours. Thank you, Michael, and good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to spend some time today telling you our story, our inventory uh, journey that started about five years ago and eventually wound up with RFID um, being integrated in a lot of the things we do here at Benita Springs Fire and hopefully share some information that might be helpful to you um, from asset management to inventory control and uh, some of the equipment and some of the things we're looking to, to move into in the near future. So next slide please. So I want to start a little bit with the district that I work for. And I think it has some bearing. Some people may be listening today are not in the EMS uh, first responder fire world. So I, I think it's uh, valuable for you to know what we do, how we do it, how big we are, and how we manage it, and how much time and how many people it takes to do that. So we're down in Southwest Florida, as you see. We run about 8,000 calls a year, emergency calls. We have seven fire stations, each one holding about uh, 400 medical items. We have a medical control or inventory room at each one of those stations. We have nine apparatus being fire engines, rescue units, and uh, even, even boats. Um, we also, besides medical supplies, which I'll talk about mostly today because that's probably been the biggest, I don't know, the biggest difference uh, in time management and, and savings for us, but we also do fixed assets. We, we tag everything over, over $750 and we have uh, now we probably have about 1,700 items as we grow, and um, this was done, you know, the information here I pulled about a year ago or six months ago. And then we have a master supply room that houses all of our medical inventory. That's medications, 
equipment. We are an advanced life support um, department, so we carry anything that any typical ambulance or EMS service would on all our fire apparatus and rescue units. Next slide, please. So about five years ago, uh, I came off the floor, as many of us do in the fire service, as a lieutenant paramedic on the road and came into administration, which we all swear we'd never do, but here I am five, six years later. Um, so the, one of the things that I inherited was inventory. I was the EMS chief. So I looked at what we were doing, and I'm going to share a little bit of our shortcomings and some of the problems we'd have, but I share it because I think most people out there, whether you're in the first responder world or not, or this industry, you're, you're going to be able to identify with some of the problems we encountered. Now, it can be on a larger scale or a smaller scale. That's why I talked to you about how big our department was. We had one logistics officer at the time. And, uh, and of course, when I moved into EMS, we had all the, the inventory that I told you about a few minutes ago being probably 2,500, 3,000 items in our master supply, the, at that time, seven apparatus, and a station, uh, a, a room at every station where we kept these supplies. Now. Keep in mind that some of the problems that we encounter, although each industry would have their own unique problems, in our world it's a little different than some like in retail, for instance. We run 24-7, 365, as you know, all fire ambulances do. So we absolutely cannot run out of items. We can't run out of medications or, or you know, um, IV catheters or BVMs to help, rest, you know, help somebody breathe. Because if we do, that means we're not serving the community, we're not serving our patients, and we have licensing and we have inspections and reviews and evaluations just like any other business would, probably a little more critical because of what I just mentioned. So it's imperative that we never run out of anything. So what we were doing and what many people do, many agencies do, is they overorder because they're worried about running out. And the reason they overorder is, I just said, but is because they can't see what they have. They don't know what they have exactly. So just like if you're at the store and you forget what's in your refrigerator, uh, what do you do? You don't remember if you have milk, for instance, so you buy two. And then you get home and I had two in the fridge. I'm just using it as an example. So because you don't know and you, like I mentioned, we had seven stations, um, it's very hard to keep track of all those things. So that's the, the lack of visibility, which is on the, on the screen here. Uh, manual counting is how we did this. So we had our crews go into these medical supply rooms I mentioned, and they would count widgets, band-aids, whatever you want to call them, all these items that I mentioned. We had probably 160 different, 350, 400 items in there. They had to not only count them, they, they're in a lot of different categories, and we have expiration dates on all of them. So the expiration dates are a challenge all by themselves because of the penalty if we carry or treat or give a, a patient a medication that's expired. It could be a felony, um, people could lose their license, we could get fined from the, from the state if it got found. It's a serious, um, it's a pretty serious uh, problem. So I'm not going to pick on our firefighters and EMTs and paramedics, but their job is not to count inventory and be logistics officers. Their job is to run emergency calls, save lives, protect property. So we had some problems there without going into it, some, some errors. So we overordered. We had a lack of visibility. Um, the crews also hoarded a tremendous amount of, of equipment. We would cover 72 square miles with these seven stations. So when they ran out of something, they either had to drive across town, and many times in season here in South Florida, it's, the traffic is horrendous, or they had to call an officer, which they didn't want to do, the battalion chief or a captain, to bring them something. So they would go and grab or ask for a lot more than they ever needed. So when I first started going and doing my own inventory and oversight on what we were doing here for inventory, I found things expired. I found five, six, seven, ten times the amount they should have. All of these things are wasted. Uh, when they expire, guess what we do with them? We throw them away. So our cost was out of control. Our, our waste was ridiculous and how much, and it was, it was keeping me up at night. I'm a little bit OCD and I just couldn't function. So I was on the hunt for a new system. And um, the last one there over on the left, decreased inventory waste and time spent. So I mentioned that between the counting of the, of the items in the rooms, I mentioned the battalion chiefs and the captains running around town or a, a full-size fire engine. Imagine that running across that kind of district, seven, eight, nine, 30 minutes each way to pick up anything. I mean, they have to carry all these things by 
by law um, to keep our license. So it doesn't matter if it's a life-saving medication or if it's ice packs or uh, Band-Aids. They have to have them on the truck or gauze. So the time wasted is almost hard to um, put a dollar amount on or it's hard to count. So th I'm just saying that was a tremendous savings as well, besides what you're going to see in a little bit on the actual dollar amount we sell, save. Excuse me. Next slide, please. So then we, we, I went out there and we looked at uh, different inventory systems. We found, of course, the typical barcoding, and um, I, there were several others. And I, they still, you still had to rely on something else. You could barcode it, but I had these remote locations, and how would I keep up with, how would we keep up with, I say I because I was in that position at the time, how would we keep up with, keep up with the ever-changing um, inventory? Remember, at 8,000 calls, and some places run a lot more than we do, but they're running those calls all day, which means they're in and out of those rooms replacing items on the shelf. It's not automatic. So if it leaves the room and you have a bar counter at the door, it may catch those things. But it's clunky at best. It's not live inventory, um, and the details on it are, are tough, and, you, you know, and, and it's time-consuming. So then I ran into a presentation I saw, like this one, at a local county fire chief's meeting, and... I had the owner of Silent Partner Technologies come in, and he was talking about this RFID stuff. And I say it that way because I'm not a tech-savvy person. I'm not really into technology and software, so I didn't know what it meant. So I had to ask, what is RFID? And if anybody's out there and you don't, if you're not in this industry, you probably do because you're watching this. But So I had to find out what it meant, what it was all about. I remember it was tremendously overwhelming to me as far as technology goes but the result and what I saw, the potential, what was presented that it could do for us, um, I, I just couldn't dismiss it. So we decided to go with it. I met with the owner afterwards, called him back, and, and I'm going to spend a little time here on the timeline implementation and what it takes to get started. It's, it can be a little overwhelming. It was for us because when I told you that our system, our inventory system was a little bit of a mess, if you imagine going out into your own garage, and I'm not implying, sorry, that anybody's garage is messy, but most people's are. So if you go out there and you start looking for one particular item, it's overwhelming. And when the day comes when you get told or you decide you're going to go out and clean your garage, it's the, it's, the same kind of, uh, it's the same kind of challenge. So the way to do it, the way we had to do it, and what we were looking at is emptying all stations, master supply, and start over. Things had to be organized. Things had to be tagged. It had to be entered into the software so that we know what they were. It had to be named something that we knew what it was going to be. So all that had to kind of happen at the same time. And that was, that was the most difficult part probably is the undertaking of the implementation getting started phase. So that's what we did. We took it all out. We got bins. You'll see a picture in a minute on one of the slides. We tagged everything. We put it in the software. We entered the expiration dates I mentioned. And we had now we were ready to have an accurate count. So that covers the timeline, the implementation, um, the organization, the labels. Now, if we were going to do a barcoding, you still have to inventory every, everything every time you get it or tag it or something anyway. So that was really no different than any of the systems that we looked at. Um, the timeline for us, and we did it part-time, and we put a small team together here of maybe three or four of us, and we only went out a day, day and a half a week. And it took us probably two to three months to do the entire de department. So it really wasn't that bad because it was a part-time on the side. Oh, by the way, in the middle of all this, we lost our logistics officer. So all of a sudden, I inherited this without any logistics officer at all. So it was just a one-man one show, or so, so to speak, at the time, which made it a little more overwhelming. Um, next slide, please. So uh, this slide, when, we, when I was talking about um, Silent Partner Technologies, when we started, the only thing we were, were doing was the RFID and um, the inventory system. Since then, Silent Partners has come up with this enterprise solution, so to speak, so that when you log into it, all the things you see on your screen, they're capable of doing now. And we use quite a few of these now. One of the problems in our industry is we have a different login and a different application and a different app or software for almost everything we do. When we hire somebody, we have to get them signed on to, you know, a dozen different websites and with passwords and, <laughs> and entries, and it's, it gets a little frustrating. So, for instance, I'm going to run through what we use. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about them um, because, 
you, you know, it's, it would take too much time. So we do the asset tracking I mentioned earlier on the first one on the top left. That's all our things that, again, that are on our apparatus. We tag everything from our computers that I'm sitting in front of now to our fire engines uh, to, you know, uh, nozzles and, and fans and uh, the jaws of life, right, the extrication equipment. We tag anything over $750. And that's more helpful when we come to our annual or semi-annual inventory, that you can do that with an RFID um, zebra gun, walk around the trucks or apparatus or in a station and inventory the whole contents in a few minutes instead of finding things and looking for, you know, literally hours. Uh, the checklist we use um, for you don't have to have um, specifically RFID tags to do inventory or to do checks on the truck. So that just comes up and it's a, it's a paperless system that you can do checks on anything you like, whether it's the contents of these medical bags or the complete contents of your fire apparatus. Um, medical supplies tracking on the right there I already talked about. That's what we're going to talk about most today. The Knox Metavault integration uh, I'll, I'll do on the last slide. We're in the process of doing that right now. Check-in, check-out is, is an awesome application that we use, and that's when anybody uses or borrows anything from here. We have classes all the time that our firefighters attend, and they check out air packs and bunker gear and things like that. And when they do that, you log into the system, everything is already in there, assigned a number and a tag, and you just access that up and put it to who it's assigned out to, and of course it's, it's documented. And there's a signature on there for, for the person that's taking it, and of course who is checking it out. And service tracking is probably the biggest one that we that we use. That's anything that goes out of here for repair, we send through Sun Partners software. So we can look back on bunker gear. Again, um, any of the equipment we have, our tick cameras, how often are they being serviced, uh, how often are they, are they damaged, and what's the history on all these things at one location, which, you know, again, used to be paperwork and, and sheets, endless sheets of paper, and each person having these little files within their computer that we couldn't access. So this is all in one spot, um, which has really been um, very helpful for us. So the last thing I'll mention over on the right there is chain of custody logs, and that's integrated into the um, narcotics and the DEA diversion system, and we're, in a, we're doing that now with our Knox Med Vaults. So we'll talk about that again in a little bit. Next slide, please. So here's one of our typical fire station supply rooms. And I, we don't have a picture. It says transformation. We don't have a picture of what it used to look like. But imagine walking into a room about the size of a bedroom and having things piled to the ceiling in boxes with a narrow walkway. And that's what our main supply room looked like before. I found things in there in the bottom that had expired two months before and hadn't even been opened yet. That was the kind of waste that was going on because of our, because of our uh, lack of oversight lack of visibility. So what it looks like now, uh, expiration dates, if I go through the slide here that I mentioned earlier, everything in there that's tagged, the expiration date's already attached to that tag. So when we look at any of these items, the expiration date comes up automatically. Real-time visibility. Now, we made a decision on this. You can do live, we call them smart rooms, smart shelves, heck, smart trucks if you want. You can make any of these live with antenna and readers installed in the rooms. And that's what we chose to do. If you use the Zebra gun, the, the reader gun, there's applications for that as well. I already mentioned that we do our apparatus, we do our fire stations, we do our gear, um, bunker gear inventory rooms to find all those things. But when the supplies are moving, I mentioned as fast as they do with calls being run, where they're running 10, 15, 20 calls a day on, a, on an apparatus, it doesn't do us any good to know the inventory the last time we were there or the last time someone walked in there with a gun because it completely changed. Or if I inventoried it now, by the time I go get what I need and bring it back in five hours or tomorrow, it's already changed. So we're always playing catch up and never bringing the accurate amount. So what do you do? Going back of 15 minutes, you, give, you bring more than you need, you overstock every place with no guarantee that it's ever gonna be used. So then you wind up throwing it away. So we wanted that real-time visibility so that 24-7, I could we could look at any smart device, being your phone, a computer, anywhere, and see the contents of that room live. So we know what they did. We know the types of calls they ran because of the equipment or the medications that already moved out of the room. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, the faster inventory, of course, I already mentioned the smart shelves and the improved organization. So next slide, please. So here's an example of another thing uh, that was on that 
that in the implementation slide was packaging and organization. When we buy on the left there, if you're in our industry there, but everybody knows what an IV catheter is, is when you go in and you get an IV bag hung on you for a procedure or they, they're giving you medications or fluids, you, they, you know, they put a needle in your arm. So when we order those, they came in boxes of 50 or 100. Now we don't run that many calls, we're not that big. So if I put a sticker on a box of 50 or 100, we'd throw away 60 of those. For instance, if it's a, bag of, a box of 100 because of the expiration dates. So we repackage these for just-in-time inventory and holding or keeping the minimum amount of inventory we need at each location, depending on how many calls they run, how, you know, the time of year. We have a huge season down here where our population increases by two, or sometimes threefold. So our calls also increase by threefold. So we change these par levels or minimum inventory based on the time of year, and you can do that at any time. So we package down. If you're a bigger department, I've done some presentations for big departments. You know, um, they're running you know 140,000 calls a year, and they have 55 stations. Well, they may have stations that ru that are three apparatus running out of it, and they may run 30, 40 calls a day. Well, they may put the sticker just on that box of 50 that I mentioned. It's very scalable. It really doesn't matter. Um, you just change the contents within the packaging with the, with the stickers on. It. Um, and then you know, like for instance, in our inventory, it'll be a package of five on those IV catheters. We could make it a package of 10. It could be a box of 50. So you quickly know the total inventory of what you have in each room. Uh, over on the right is a different time to tag there. Those are medications that have these little, we call them wrap tags. And um, there's some challenges. You see the antenna above, and there's some challenges about separation and where you keep those so that it reads properly. If the tags lay on top of each other, they don't always read that great. They don't read through water well. These tags anyway, the small paper and expensive tags and they don't read through metal. So there's some challenges that we, that we found, but um, again, once you get to that point and you figure all those things out, um, there's, it, we read, I'd say we read probably 98, 99% accuracy at all locations now. Now we were kind of early in this whole um, process, so we had to find some of the, navigate our way through some of these things along with Silent Partner. But now we know exactly how to do it, um, I know that the company passes all these things on to whatever department or whatever your needs are, and it really cuts down on the amount of uh, speed bumps, so, so to speak, or hurdles you have to get over. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a quick snapshot of, of the software. Uh, you can look uh, many ways. Over on the right, you'll see a total inventory by items at every station. Uh, that You can also pull up a, a pie chart there, of course, and expirations. And then down below is just a, uh, I like this one because it shows you what we can attach to each tag. So at Station 1 Med, that's our med room at Station 1, the first thing you see up there is a BVM. That, that's the, the bag, you know, if you're not in our industry that you ventilate someone with. Shows where it's assigned, shows its current location, shows the last time it was seen by date and time, and also you can customize these depending on the item. But you can put in the information you want. The expiration date would also be um, you could add in there. So at a quick glance, you can see any one item. For instance, when we started this, we'd get a call from a station and says, I'm out of BVMs, for instance. So the BC or I would say, well, hold on a second. I can go to my phone or my computer, and I look it up, and I look at station one inventory, and I say, no, you have one, two, two there. The other two on the outside are missing. You have two. They were seen 15 minutes ago because we, we run it about, it updates about every hour. And uh, they're there now, and here's the numbers on them, here's the expiration date, please go find them. That is a tremendous from, again, going back to what we would have done before is went and got those items, put them in a car, and drive all the way to that station or have that apparatus with an entire crew come out to our main supply room to pick those things up. And believe me, many times they're there. But because of the disorganization and the chaotic uh, type of inventory we had, people couldn't find them or didn't know where they were and didn't know what to look for. So those are just some of the highlights of, of what the software does. Uh, you can look at the summary of expirations, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. Next slide, please. So here's a, a pick ticket. This is what we use the majority of the time. Every day, I just got in such a habit of it, even though I'm not the EMS chief per se anymore, I would look at a pick ticket for every location. So the pick ticket is what you are low on. 
So of those 350, 400 items, or if it's 3,000 items, it doesn't matter. We set a minimum amount or a par for each one of these items. And of course, if you have that amount in the room, this doesn't show up on this pick ticket. So this shows you what you have to pick, what you have to get and bring there. So it highlights there, at the top there, the airway e endotracheal with 3.0. Our par, for instance, is one. We have zero, so we need one. So this is just a summary, a quick summary of what we're low on. So daily, like I started this, uh, this slide with, I still come in every day and look at all stations, uh, all seven stations. It doesn't take me but a few minutes. Not only do I see what we're low on at those stations, it also shows me the, the quantity maybe and the types of calls. For instance, if I, see, if I had seen that endotracheal tube, that's a child airway. That tells me that we probably ran a significant call on a, on a child or a pediatric patient. That's something I want to know about. That's something we're probably going to look closer at or review because they're not nearly as common as an adult call. So those things cue us in on uh, a lot of things other than just inventory. You know, what happened now, I would go look at the PCR, the EHR, um, the health record or the report to take a look at what happened, how we treated that patient, what did we use. Um, and kind of do a QA just based on the software I look at every day without reviewing 30 or 40 calls. So it's much quicker um, access to that. Down below is how we, what we see what's, what's coming up what's about to expire. So those items in yellow, that's at the bottom of the pick ticket. And this is an older slide, of course, but it shows you what is going to, the way we have it set it now, it shows you what's going to expire within 30 days. So we never, and I can say this safely, we never have anything expired in a room or on a truck. Therefore, we take away that possibility of giving, a pa first of all, giving a patient something that's expired, which can be dangerous, but also protects the individual paramedic crew and the district here from any um, legal problems with giving or carrying. Because even if you're carrying it, an inspector comes and finds this on the truck or in one of these rooms, we could get a fine or get a, a negative evaluation for those things. So that just has been eliminated because of uh, the software. Next slide, please. So fixed assets, we also did. We had success we, with the uh, medical inventory, which again was probably the bigger challenge just because of the rotation and how much of it we have. We call them consumables because they go away so quickly. So inventorying those is a much bigger challenge than some of the bigger items. In this picture, they're showing bunker gear. So that's, of course, the protective gear we wear. We have an RFID tag in the pant and the jackets of all of our bunker gear. Same information is on it. Who is assigned to, when the expiration date, where that person and where that gear is assigned, what station. Um, and again, trying to find all that and digging through this gear, you, can, you don't even have to get that close. We can walk in the bunker room, bunker gear room like that, and we have the same racks as this picture and the same kind of setup, and pull the trigger, and in 15, 20 seconds, I know all the gear that's in there, when it's expired. Heck, I can even put the um, repair history on it and it tells me everything about it and who it's assigned to. So pretty amazing. Uh, and, and there's an expiration date on these as well, that by NFPA, you can't uh, keep that gear in service past its, its expiration date. So we, these we don't do daily, but these we probably inventory and check twice a year, just to see. Um, service tracking, yeah, items I already mentioned. It's showing you a picture of the reader. We have that exact reader here. That's what we use is that Zebra um, gun, RFID gun. And the tags, is worth mentioning. I showed you a different tag earlier on the medications on those vials, but there's, I don't know, I wouldn't say endless. There's a lot of different types, size of tags for different applications. The tags we put in the bunker gear is very different than those stickers you saw. You would say that's, those stickers aren't going to hold up to a, if a firefighter takes this into a real fire. They're not the same. Um, we have taken those tags and run them through our burn building, our extractor, cleaner. Uh, we've done it you know, over and over and over and over and had no failure on them. So they're built very different. They have different ranges for different applications. Our annual inventory, the last thing on this, where it used to take us, I don't know, two months, um, our part-time now logistics officer, she works three days a week, she just inventoried the entire district in about two weeks by herself. So that's the kind of difference that it takes from doing weeks and weeks. And she's not doing it full-time because of what I was talking about. That room with 2,500, 3,000 items, our master supply inventory room, we still do that with the gun because the gun uh, is a little bit more accurate. 
than the room, than that room particularly. You can make the rooms that accurate. Ours are not. And it's in my our same location as our administrative building. So we use the gun and we'll inventory about 3,000 items in about 30 seconds. Think about that. And these are repetitive. You saw the shelves. All the things in that room that you would have to go and verify and look at and count. You can walk in, pull the trigger, hit upload and walk out. And then print a full report um, on the, the status of the room, you know, what you're low on, and then that's how you order. You know exactly what to order based on that, that master supply room. So again, pretty amazing on what it's done for us. Next slide, please. So kind of a summary slide here. I've been talking about how it's made our lives easier. We've become much more efficient. We've become safer, not only for us, but for our patients we serve. It saved us an incredible amount of time. But a lot of times what comes back, that first slide, is, well, how much does it cost? And uh, when did, what was your return on investment? This is real numbers from us. And I'm not going to say it's only because of RFID. It made us much more aware. It enabled us to keep a much smaller inventory. Um, we saved, we, we got our return on investment in the first year, and we saved over 50% on our EMS budget, 50%. Um, most people save 10 or 15, and they think it's great. I was amazed. when I was, It was the first year I was in. So, of course, I was sweating that this thing was going to work at all because I think I sold my career on it. But um, <laughs> it worked out really well, and we're still talking about it five years later. So, again, just to summarize, enable firefighters to focus on their primary mission I talked about. Increase visibility on all stations, um, significant reduction in, in medication expirations. I already mentioned, I forgot that was even in here. We saved the first year 50%, which means we've been saving more than that every year. Now, it hasn't increased by 50% every year, but, um, yeah, we we've, we've still see a savings significantly now with two more stations five years later than what our EMS budget was then. And, of course, the, the other things I talked about, task times and labor costs, that's hard to even put a number on because it, we've become so much more efficient. Um, next slide, please. Oh, that's it. So I wanted to mention one more thing. I, uh, I forgot there wasn't a slide on it. I mentioned the med vault, the NOx system. So our narcotics are the one thing that we have not put this RFID technology on because it's kept separate. They are kept in metal safes um, in the truck's apparatus. And the RFID, unless you put an antenna and a reader inside it, you can't reach it. So, and there, we, we use very little, so it hasn't been a, a huge challenge for us because we don't move that much of it and we don't use it on every patient, of course. But we're, we're getting there. We're getting ready to do a beta test where we're going to put a uh, reader and an uh, antenna in these boxes, and that will also become part of our, uh, the same things I've talked about today. You can see it 24-7. And the big thing about narcotics, if you're not in our industry, you all have heard in the news over the last few years even about the uh, opioid problem, epidemic, addictions, people diverting them, stealing them. Um, you know, it's a major problem, addiction problem. So we had a big problem in our industry about people in, within the departments, like myself, diverting these or taking them. So there has been a big um, spotlight magnifying glass put on this from the DEA and from the Department of Health and the respective states. So we are really going after trying to have a, a tremendous amount of oversight on these so we can track them from beginning to end and, um, you know, having no diversion or no, no theft, no stealing, no abuse problems in it. So this is just one more step besides keeping them in a safe with access into it by our paramedics. If we can see them live and we know exactly when they move, um, the day, the time, the stamp, and who did it, that's tremendous. So that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed next. I think that's about it. That's the last slide, correct, Michael? Excellent, uh, Chief. You're correct. That is the last slide. Uh, outstanding job. Really appreciate you sharing your experiences. Um, if you have questions or want additional information, uh, you can use the contact information that's here on your, on your screen. And we're going to take a few questions that came up during the presentation uh, right now, Chief, if you don't mind. Sure. And one of the questions that came up was, talk a little bit more about the, the labor involved in tagging uh, all of your items. Seems like that would be very expensive and difficult to do. 
Yeah, um, that's probably the most common question. I, I get quite a few departments that call, whether it be local because I know them, or um, you know references because of this kind of thing. So what people seem to be concerned a lot with, as you just said, and that's probably why they asked, oh my gosh, you're telling me every single thing we order on all these consumables, these medical supplies, we have to tag? Yes. Now, you saw how we package. You really don't tag each individual. You package them appropriately for your use or how many calls, emergency calls you're running. So uh, it's not that time consuming. We spend probably, and I've timed this because I get asked this so much, we probably spend about two hours a week. Um, and you know how big we are. I told you how many calls we run. And that's, that's when I say we, that's one person. That's our part-time logistics officer. I've tracked and documented and she spends eh, on a busy time of year about two hours a week. Or, again, if you were barcoding or something, you have to inventory everything anyway. Even if you're not, you still have to put it in at some kind of inventory system. So the sticker part's the easiest. The stickers are about 10 or 11 cents a piece, I think. So in the big scheme of things, we're, the, the comparison on the cost and the, co the savings in time later and all the things I talked about today, it's, it's not even worth, I mean, it is because someone asked. I don't mean it that way. It's not even comparable on the amount of time it, talks, it takes to, to tag something and enter it into the software as it does in the end. Remember, once you do that, you never have to do it again. Think about that. Expiration dates on medical is usually a year and a half to two years. You never have to inventory again. It's all done for you. That's the full-time visibility. So that's a pretty good trade-off. So that would be my best answer for that. It's a good investment. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, another question came in uh, that asked about where else you might see RFID being used in, in fire EMS outside of what you're doing today? I don't know if you can answer that one or not. Yeah, uh, I am, just because I get, you know, quite, every time you get questions, if you don't have any real answers, you kind of dig into it a little bit. And, of course, I still deal with silent partner technologies pretty often, so I know what they're working on, and I know what we're looking forward to in the future. I talked a bit about today about these smart rooms, smart shelves. I also quickly mentioned smart vehicles. I mentioned the med vault where the narcotics you can put this application anywhere. So you can take what we're doing in these rooms and you could actually, I say light up or make smart <laughs> the entire apparatus to where you have full-time inventory of everything in it. So not only are your medical supplies inventoried, but all those things that I talked about, assets that we tag. For instance, I'll tell you a really, really quick story, that a big fear of ours. Cardiac monitor that we use on a patient that has a heart problem. They're about $40,000. If you leave that, and this happened to us, you leave that in someone's home because you have a critical patient, um, again, I don't have to say it again, it's a $40,000 item. Because you can put this inventory, and that's just one example on one of the more expensive things we carry, that would alert you when you got back in your apparatus or your rescue unit that that item has not been seen and is not inventoried. So uh, that's kind of another possibility that where we're headed. So you don't even have to go put eyes on this thing or inventory the truck. I mean, you would want to always have the human element here to put on, but that's coming. I mentioned the, um, the med vaults with the narcotics. So those kinds of things are out there, and I think it can really be used in any application. We use it for the supplies, for the stations. We use RFID in some of those, not even in the medical world or the fire world, uh, just anything we have throughout the district. So we're start, starting to use it for uh, everything we buy and want to track. And another question came about the data storage, uh, whether you're doing that in an in-house on-premises server or on the cloud, or if you would recommend a preference. Uh, it's on the cloud. You know, we, we, we just go to, the, to their website, and Silent Partners has that software and that page we talked about earlier with all those enterprise solutions and all those accesses. You know, he continuously upgrades that. Uh, the software gets um, customized quite a bit. We did some of it here. And um, so, yes, it, it all stays in that, in that application. We don't keep it in-house on a server or in our own computers now. Excellent. And another question came in, and I uh, don't know if you can answer this or not, but uh, to give it a shot, or I'll certainly give you a hand if I can, can this same system be used in a police evidence management room? I, well, I don't know. I'm not the, I told you earlier, I'm not the technical hardware or software kind of person. I just learn how to use it because it really helps me, right? It's a selfishness, and we've been very successful with it. I, and the reason I say that, I think you could use it almost anywhere, um, but I don't know the restrictions they would have 
on something like that. But if it's just inventorying, I don't see why not, why you couldn't use it on anything. The only problem applications, like I mentioned, is shelving and obstacles. So sometimes if you have metal, like I mentioned our med vaults, it's hard to read through. So there has to be some adjustments maybe in a, in a normal stock room. Um, there may have to be. But other than that, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Well, I know this audience is, is mainly fire EMS, but I'll, yeah. I'll share that we, we do have uh, PDs that are using RFID and barcoding for evidence management. And uh, we can certainly find the application or help apply this in that scenario as, as well. And we've got time for one or two more questions if people want to type them in. I've got one more coming in, and this one's kind of uh, interesting. Is Have you been able to recoup any expenses using federal programs uh, or medical buyback programs through FEMA as a result of, of using this of using an RFID asset based solution yeah that's kind of interesting we did do that a few years ago when Irma came through when we get FEMA reimbursed because of the state of emergency and you're all familiar with that so our um, financial coordinator came and said you know how much equipment how many how much medical stuff have we used in the last two months from the beginning of this thing till afterwards, because they're all linked to the storm. Because this, without getting into all the details, I ran a report in less than 10 minutes that showed every single thing that moved out of each one of our seven stations with a price tag on it. You can put a picture to it and a total at the bottom and handed it in for reimbursement. So I, that wouldn't, I wouldn't even have tried to do that before. And That's they really want cool. very specific. If you've dealt with them, and I know there's people out there nodding their heads right now, if you've dealt with FEMA before, you can't put about $10 or about $5 or about $1,000. You can't do that. It's got to be exact. Number, you know, produce me a receipt, <laughs> an invoice so that we can prove it. So, um, yeah, and we take all that information I mentioned right off the invoices so it's very accurate and up to date. The other thing I'll throw in there, and I know I may be going over, but this was really important in our current world with PPE. When this pandemic started, as you all know, if you're in this world, but even if you're not, you saw it on the news every day. We had a serious problem with, with protective equipment for our responders. So the state and the county wanted counts of exactly what we used and what we had if you wanted to get any, because they were the ones distributing. You couldn't buy it anywhere. So we, that, that uh, organization and that packaging, we took two N95 masks, put them in a bag and a sticker. We took two or three gowns. In other words, we packaged down so precise that we could measure down to the single usage every day to wow. get accurate numbers on what we were using and what we needed and what our expected projection was and how long it would last us. And it was invaluable. We're still doing it today. We have to give uh, weekly reports to the county. Now, it's, it's a little better now, of course. You all know that. It's easier to get. But we still do it. And again, without this, I don't know how we would have kept up with the counts of uh, we wear them on every single patient so that we run on. So it's pretty amazing. Excellent. We have one more question. It's probably a good question to close on. Uh, it's kind of open-ended, but what is your favorite part about the RFID tags or tagging the equipment and the system you're using? Uh, I, I spent most of the time today on it. The medical consumables, the medical supplies is it. That was the most challenging part of this. The other are really nice benefits, the asset tagging, because you can do quick inventory. But that has changed the entire way we run our job. I mean, about 75, again, those of you in our business, 75% of all of our calls are medical. So we've become a pretty much a medical service. I mean, we still do fire, of course, and special ops and, and hazard mitigation and things like that. But that's, the, that's made the biggest difference, both financially and um, efficiency, for sure. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Chief, thank you again. Uh, for volunteering your time to, to share this information. I think it's terrific for everybody to hear uh, your experience. There's nothing like actually going to somebody who's been there, done that, and been successful to, to learn something new. Uh, I, again, want to thank everybody for being with us and, and taking the time to sit through the presentation and, and hear what we have to say. Again, if you have any questions that come up afterwards or if you had a uh, want a little bit more information, you know, please contact me. Uh, my information is right here on the screen. You can also contact uh, Ted at Silent Partner Technologies, and we would be happy to uh, assist you. I know that I always leave a meeting and kind of smack my head and say, oh, I meant to ask. Well, 
please email us, call us. We'll be happy to assist you. Uh, so, Chief, thank you very, very much. And folks that signed in to join us, thank you guys for coming as well. Everybody have a great afternoon and stay safe. Thank you, Michael.